Hello and welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to have a nice little gouache demonstration that you can sit back and enjoy watching. This is a scene from Little West Cape Village. Let me know if you know where this one is. And it's all about light, the trees and the mountains in the background and just a a sort of atmospheric kind of scene, a place that I visit quite regularly and enjoyed being there in the moment and uh, came back to the studio and painted some of my holiday memories. Now before we get into the demonstration remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't done so already so you don't miss the next video and if you want to get more insights and little things that are happening behind the scenes in my studio and what I'm up to have a look at the YouTube membership as well just look for the blue join button below okay let's have a look at the painting this is the reference that's inspiring the painting now starting off in my little journal this is 300 gram cold press watercolor paper just sketching out the scene focusing on the building as the focal point and getting in the shadow pattern which is so important and then uh, just getting straight into it lots of greens lots of blue in the background and I'm going to offset a few strong oranges and some lights against those cool colors so just mixing a selection here that I'm sort of working out for the mountain in the background where the sun is hitting that mountain. Um, it's sort of ochreish greens. So a lot of um, atmospheric involvement with those greens really desaturating the greens with a little bit of orange and red and getting that sort of dirty yellow ochre as well this is just the first layer I will work over the mountain again but it's important just to get going so putting some colors down pretty quickly And now looking at some of those atmospheric bluey greens. I don't know what you'd call them. And most of the colors, it's hard to actually come up with a name for them because they're all desaturated to some extent. Adding some white into those greens, getting a kind of a, almost a turquoise color. And now really cooling it down with some cerulean. Bit of ultramarine as well. Now you may be wondering where I get these oranges and you may not see them in the reference but uh, there are some orange flowers and what I do is I, I really look for the color notes and then exaggerate them somewhat yeah bringing a little bit of blue into that uh, cream color for the cool shadow side of the building so as I said, I, I just look for those color notes and see if I can add in a bigger splash of color. And of course, orange against all the cool blues, that's a natural complementary re relationship going on there. And that's important. The complements between colors add a lot of vibrancy and excitement to 
a what it, what is really a very calm and relaxed sort of scene, but it still can get that punch of color. In the road, it may look a little washed out in the photo where the sun is coming through, but you can see that you need to add some color in there as well. That bit of ochre, a bit of um, warmed up titanium white for the highlights. And yeah, a beautiful saturated green created with lemon yellow and a bit of cerulean blue. It's all about getting color down quickly, putting it down, picking up a color note from the reference, then mixing it on the palette, put it down. You can always adjust. So start off boldly, big shapes, lots of paint. Now the all important dark mass shapes, all those shrubs and hedges that you see those darks make the lights stand out now the edge of the road or the edge of the sidewalk don't make them too regular, even if they look pretty straight. You want to chop them up a bit, make things irregular. Remember when you're painting in a sort of painterly style, a loose style, what's important is keeping asymmetry instead of symmetry. Everything's a little off kilter, um, a little messed up here and there there's a straight line you may just have to chop into it a bit and yeah we're talking obviously organic shapes you don't want a perfectly straight tree you don't want anything like that anything too uniform chop into it mess it around a bit that adds variety and interest Now uh, there's shadows across the road, so we're going to bring some of those in. Yeah, I'm catching a few of those halo highlights around the foliage. Just blending those edges a little bit, so there is a transition. Otherwise it becomes a little too um, graphic, a little too stylized. All those shapes in the hills and mountains, well, you, you can't really plan them. You just look for them and put them down where you think they need to go and then assess. A lovely little bit of ultra and cerulean to make a strong shadow in the foreground. And that's so important to lead the eye into the painting. And once again, a nice warm, cool contrast few street lamps I can see there as well adding interesting little verticals to break the patterns up more highlights more halos just pushing them in I'm using a, a smaller brush for this this is um, a sable brush very nice for these sort of things it holds a lot of moisture as well re-establishing some of those darks adding a few cooler blues into those darks as well and back into the mountain nice cool blues there as well and this is just assessing adding a few little marks breaking up mass shapes 
adding some interest and finishing off with some good strong punch of color in those oranges and reds just picking it up and and uh, balancing it out here and there but most of all around the focal area of the building just refining the building bringing a little bit of light and color into the roof and that should be more or less done with the building dark accents and uh, let's switch these lights on I think nice dab of warmed up white white and a little bit of yellow one or two little strokes here and there and then I can sign it off and that's it really um, quite a fun little painting Quite quick to do, just about warm and light color and light and dark shapes. Warm and cool color, I should say. And get the tape off and let's have a closer look. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I certainly enjoyed painting this one. And gouache is such a fantastic medium for nice little journal paintings like this. Something you can just sit back, start painting, no pressure, just to have fun doing it. Now if you want to learn more about gouache painting and the techniques behind it, have a look at my course gouache painting for beginners. There will be a link below and you will find some really good information in there and a few demonstrations to guide you through the gouache techniques that you'll need to do paintings like this. All right, well, that's it for this week. We'll see you again next week and take care and happy painting. Mm -hmm.